Hello and welcome to the Productivity Pep Talk. This is your place to pop in for just a few minutes every weekday to get inspired, get connected, and get clear on how you want to show up in the world today. Why? Because every day matters. Hi, I am your host, Elise Enriquez, and it is my mission to change the way that people think about productivity. What if being productive wasn't about getting more done? What if being productive is actually about living an everyday life you love while still moving forward what matters most to you? This means being clear about why you're here, what you believe in, and the kind of impact you're trying to have in this world. And of course, having the systems you need to make all of that a reality. That's what we focus on here. So you ready? Let's get things started. Now, I'm going to tell you, hitting a go live or record or whatever it is I'm doing here was a risky proposition. I was eating some granola <laughs> and I swear there's some just ready to choke me right now. I'm like one little fleck of granola. So Bear with me if there are any coughing fits that uh, begin, but let's kick things off with the question of the day. All right, so the question of the day. So action leads to clarity. Where do you need clarity right now? Now, this is something that I talk to my clients a lot about, so uh, especially my one-on-one -on -one clients, because you know I get to know all the things they're thinking about, they're sharing the struggle, they're sharing their ideas, they're sharing all these things with me and they're trying to figure out what to do a lot of times. They wouldn't have hired me if they didn't want to take action in the world. That doesn't mean it's always easy to do, right? So what can tend to happen is they hang out a lot up here, they hang out a lot in their head thinking about what might need to happen, thinking about the possibilities, thinking about how things may or may not play out and they become satisfied with the answers there. And by satisfied, I mean they feel like they've thought it out. And if they don't like the conclusion that it comes to, then they just don't do it. They don't do anything. Now, it is possible to think some things through, uh, but really we can't get certainty or clarity without actually taking action. So I wanna know where have you been in your head a lot? What have you been thinking a lot about and how can you get out of motion? Because you can be like, oh, I'm thinking about this. And it feels like you're in motion. But I want you to think about how to get into action. So I want you to think about like, what is it or what is the thing that you've been thinking about a lot that you're not doing anything about? And how can you take some sort of action to move forward? So the action doesn't have to be big. It can be small. It can be, you know, actually just like making a phone call or sending an email or signing up for a, a, you know, a free class. It can be anything that moves you forward out into the real world to try to figure out what all of this means to you. So I want to know from you, what have you been thinking a lot about lately where you need to start taking some sort of action? And it can be small action, but action nonetheless. And action is something I could walk in and see you doing, right? Action is making a phone call, sending an email, researching something, scheduling something, right? Those kinds of things. So where do you need clarity right now? And how can you take some action to get it? All right. Uh, speaking of which, if you have been thinking about GIST and you've been thinking about joining the GIST program, uh, our next GIST class starts uh, a week from now, <laughs> Monday the 2nd. All right, a couple people signed up, which I'm really excited about. Uh, so we've got four spots available still, soon to possibly be three, but we'll see. Four spots available right now. Uh, and so our last group starts on Monday. So if you have been thinking about GIST and not doing anything about it, head on over to my website and there'll be a link on the homepage to get to GIST to learn more about it. And you could schedule a 15 minute chat with me to just find out if it's a good fit for you. That would be a great next action if you have been thinking about it. Okay, moving on to Monday, it's Myers-Briggs Day. So on Mondays, I like to talk about the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, one specific type each week. So the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, for those of you who don't know, it's a personality inventory or assessment. And it's to help make the theory of psychological type more useful in our everyday lives. And the whole concept of the theory is that there are seemingly random uh, variations in behavior that are actually pretty orderly and consistent. And they're due to basic differences in things like where we focus our attention to get our energy, where we prefer to focus, uh, whether we prefer to focus on basic information or interpret the meaning of things, how we look at making decisions, 
And when it comes to structure, do we prefer like to get things done and decided or keep things loose and open to change? So there are a total of 16 types and each Monday we look at one of the 16 types. And today we are looking at the INFJ. So INFJ, they are the oracle for people. I love this one. I love this type. I think I say that about all the types, but so what's what's kind of the trademark or the hallmark traits of the INFJs? They seek meaning and connection. A lot of that has to do with the preference for intuition, which is represented by the letter N. They're insightful and creative. They're visionaries. They're idealistic. They're complex and they're deep, which has a lot to do with this combination of the introversion and the intuition. And then, of course, they're deeply committed to their values, which has a lot to do with the feeling and judging component for the INFJ. So amazing people, oracle for people, meaning that they can kind of see this potential for people, right? Now, INFJs, this is who they are at their best. If they are not in an environment where they are able to be themselves at their best, where they are encouraged to be themselves at their best, where they are appreciated to be themselves at their best, this is what can happen. Some of these red flags can show up. So. They can have some frustration, which leads to them not sharing with others. They start to withdraw and kind of become information hoarders, and they have tons of amazing insights. So that's a real loss for the people around them. Uh, so they can start to base their conclusions on knowing that has little basis in reality. So this has uh, this is a sense where they are kind of really digging in or kind of going all in on that preference for intuition and not paying attention to the facts at hand. So if, if you start to see this in yourself as an INFJ, if you start to see this in others as INFJs, then you can know that they are either not getting to spend a lot of their time being themselves at their best or they're not being appreciated for it. They can withdraw their energy and their insights. So all of a sudden they're just not available. They might be right there in the room with you, but they are not available and they're not sharing and they are not participating, right? And they become they can become resentful and critical. And, you know, critical nature isn't typical of an INFJ. And so that's where you can start to realize, oh, something is amiss here. So these are the red flags. And again, these red flags are about INFJs not feeling appreciated for the strengths that they bring, for the value that they bring to uh, a group, an organization, a family, a relationship, or they are not uh, able to express those things. They're not getting to be themselves at their best, or they're not being appreciated for being who they are at their best. So if you know of an INFJ, uh, who might be feeling this way, that's what you need to like, show them some appreciation, help them find their way to be at their best. So what are the productive places and pursuits for INFJs? I'm a big fan of giving yourself what you need. So if as an INFJ, you are finding that you are not getting to be you at your best, you're not being appreciated for that, it might be time to have a conversation and it might be time to look around at your environment and the things that you're doing to make sure that they align with who you really are and who you want to be. And so here's, these are the typical productive places and pursuits for an INFJ. Hey, Kim, I'm glad you love it. <laughs> um, all right, so environment that helps others grow and develop. If you are in a situation or in an environment where that is not encouraged as an INFJ, that's not going to work well for you. This going to be really draining. So you want to make sure you're in an environment that helps people grow and develop. You want to be in a place where their creativity is appreciated and new ideas are accepted. So you don't want to be in an environment where it's like, this is how we've always done it and why reinvent the wheel, right? You want a place where they're going to be open to new ideas, where personal insights are rewarded, right? Where you can you reflect on your values, you can reflect on what all the, you know, the connections that you're making in your head and people value that and appreciate that. And when there, where there's private space for reflection. Now this one has come up a few times because we've been actually talking about introverted types of, um, you know, a couple over the past few weeks. And this is really important. This is really important to energy management. So this is really true for an I. INFJ. This can be true for any type that you might want some private space for reflection. It is especially true for an INFJ, right? The things that show up on these bullets are here for a reason for this particular type. Yes, they can be true of any type. They are especially true for this type. So if you are an INFJ and you're working in an open concept office, 
which probably not right now, right? Because of COVID. But if you're at home and you have your workspace set up in the middle of the hubbub of your house and you have kids at home and a spouse at home and all of those things, it might be time to rethink your work location and give yourself the private space you need to get things done. And it might be okay for your office to be in the middle of things, but have a place where you can go for your private space for reflection. Give yourself what you need. I am a big, big fan of giving yourself what you need, no matter what your type is. But that is why I share about all these different types so that if you recognize yourself in one of these, you can work on giving yourself what you need. And if you don't know what your type is and you'd like to learn more about the Myers-Briggs type indicator and what your type might be, you can obviously Google some stuff online and take free tests and stuff like that. But um, that's not the best practice when it comes to uncovering your type. So I would highly recommend you work with a trusted certified professional. I am one of those. So feel free to reach out to me if you would like to learn more about your Myers-Briggs type and I can help set you up with some resources. All right, y'all, that is it for today. I hope you found this bit of time motivating, inspiring, and of course, actionable. And if you did, please share this video with your people, especially if you are an INFJ, share this video out to the world. If you know an INFJ, share this video out to the world and tell them to watch it, right? But I wanna create a positive ripple out in the world today. I wanna to help you help, I need your help getting resources out to people so that they can get what they need for themselves to kind of ha have the kind of impact they wanna have in the world. And remember, if you need anything at all to help you move forward what matters most in your life, I am here for you. Take care, bye-bye.